So here we go. Type 3, the story type. That's the name I give it. It's not like you're going to find this in a textbook. So, but type 3 is a story. And the main kicker here is you'll be provided with two points. And you most likely have to find a third point using symmetry, using the fact that this parabola splits in half. Okay, so if you know something on one side, you can figure it out on the other side. Okay, so uh, the best way to solve this type is to sketch it first. Okay, sketch this one first. And by sketch, I literally mean just a sketch. No scale, nothing like that. Just what's happening here. Remember that the third point is always across the starting point. This is very important. So, I basically have scenario one is uh, where the vertex is given. You'll be given, you'll be told somehow by the problem that the vertex is given. That's the top half of this page. The bottom half is the vertex is not given. Okay, so those are the two camps here. And then, of course, you could be, right, the vertex is given here. You could be on the ground or off the ground. So it depends on the, the question here. Okay, so let's, let's consider this. And the ultimate goal is to fill in this table with at least how many points do you need for a regression? Three, right? That's always the goal. A quadratic regression, okay? If it's a cubic or you will see next year, there's, you need more. A ball is kicked and reaches a maximum height of 12 feet after 1.25 seconds. What would we call this combination here, this information here? If you have a maximum height of 17, that is the vertex, right? And it also gives us the x uh, coordinate of the vertex. So this right here is the vertex. If you hear the word max or highest or lowest, minimum, that is indication that that's going to give you information towards the vertex, what that is. So we will put down, and remember, this is time, this is height. So what will come first between these two numbers? The time comes first, 1.25, and the 17 feet comes next. Okay, So there you have it. Your vertex is right there. Perfect. And uh, if a ball is kicked within a context, we, we're kicking it right from the ground, right? It's right on the ground. So without even telling us, we can imagine that this point is included, the origin. This is zero, zero. Don't underestimate the power of zero, zero. Okay, that is a point. So it starts there. We get to the highest point. And remember the axis of symmetry? Mm -hmm. So, it took us a, it took us 1.25 seconds to get from this starting point to the highest point, right? How many seconds is it going to take to go from here back down to the initial same amount? So if it's 1.25, if this is 1.25, it's going to take us another 1.25 to repeat that whole process. Okay, so this point right here is going to be, let me do this, I, I, I'll grab a red pen here to make the point. Uh, here it is. I'm just going to show you that we're going to take this, this here and we're going to multiply that by 2. And that will give us 250. And what's going to be the, the height at this point? If you hit the ground, you are at 0. Okay, so right now, this, just out of this one sentence, we came up with three points. Some of the things we just had to like read in and just figure it out and then just come up with the rest. But everything really focuses on this point that we times, the time it take, took from the initial point to the highest, we multiply that time by two because we know it's going to take the same amount of time to get back to that. Okay, so... This would be time, this is height, 
How do I know that? Because time is along the x-axis, height is along the y-axis. So this would be 0, 0. Then I go to my second point. This is 1.25, 17. And then I'm at 250, 0. Notice this part. I started at 0, and then I came back to the same height that I started at. Okay? That's some, a, a pattern I want you to notice. Okay? Now, we could type this into L1, this into L2, and actually come up with an equation that would model the scenario. Okay? And we could find out exactly what the height would be at any point in between. Right? So that's the thing here. What if you start off the ground? What if something is thrown from like a, an elevation of some sort? So let's, let's look at it this way. An object is thrown from a height of eight meters, okay? Thrown from a height of eight meters. This would be considered, in my opinion, it, that's the initial height. And what do we call the initial height? Like the fancy term for it is the y-intercept, right? So that goes right here, 0, 8. It reaches a maximum height of 13 meters at a distance of 3.5. I'm going to highlight that part right there. It reaches a maximum height of 13 meters at a distance of 3.5 meters. Notice that it's not time, it's distance and height. So this point right there, tells us that 3.5 meters sideways gives us the maximum height of 13 at that point. And this is the main, this is the one that's the most common mistake is right here. Uh, a lot of students want to go straight to, oh, initial, start, I'm hitting the ground, right? But don't go so fast. And remember, this is the axis of symmetry, right? So you're kind of thinking, from here to here took how many meters? It took us 3.5 meters, right? So it's going to take us another 3.5 to get to this point right here, which is exactly across where I started. Right? So the 3.5 repeats. And so what would that be here at this point? It would be 7. Okay. So I'm going to use a red pen for this and just show that I'm taking the 3.5. Because you won't do this down the road, what I just did here. You'll just say, oh, yeah, I have to multiply that by 2 to get the 7. And what height are you going to be at here? Same as the starting, which is 8. But Mr. Jackson, how do I find this one? You don't need it. You actually don't know. But you have three points now, correct? You have everything you need. So we'll go distance and height. And I just plug it in. 0, 8 is my first point. 3.5, 13 is my second point. 7, 8 is my third point. And I have everything I need. But make this observation. I started at 8. I'm coming back to 8. Because a lot of students go times 2, all right. They go 7, and then they go 0. They go down here, 7, 0. That's wrong. We don't know that, actually. Okay, so this is vertex is given. Okay, both of these gave you the vertex. You could just literally write it in and, and off you went. Okay, most common scenario is this, but then you have another scenario where the vertex is not given. So let's go to the bottom half here, and you might have to watch this one more time later on um, to really grasp it. Okay, that's why I record. Um, start and end point given, but no vertex provided. So that would be in this case here. So let's, again, on the ground, off the ground. Those are the two cases that you may encounter. An object is thrown upwards, reaches a maximum height of 40, and lands and remains airborne for eight seconds. That's not, uh, and lands remaining airborne. That's what we're going to say. Is this English class? Or? Remaining airborne for eight seconds. Okay. I'm just going to zoom into that. It's very small. Right? 
see if we can do that again. Okay. And you might think, oh, the vertex is given, Mr. Dirksen. It's right there, max. Remember you said max? You have partial information about the vertex. So we can say that the height, because height is 40, we know the y value of the vertex. Okay, that's right here. But we don't know the x just yet. What are we assuming about this point right here? We're going to assume that that is 0, 0 based on this context because it's not saying you're standing, you know, 5 feet above ground and then throwing it up. It's just not saying it. But we do know that this thing remains airborne for 8 seconds. So what do we know about this point if we hear that statement? That's the x-intercept here, 8, 0. Write that down, 8, 0. And I still don't have three points. I'm almost there. How would I find this number right here? You would divide by two. So exactly the opposite as before. The struggle will be to sketch it and know where are the points. So eight divided by two is four, right? Now you have your three points. So you go, what is this, time? And height, 0, 0, 4, 40, 8, 0. And again, if you're using symmetry, you should observe. Okay, I'm, I'm starting at 0. I'm going back to 0. Makes sense. Okay. And a last one here, off the, off the ground. Very sluggish again, my camera. I don't know. I don't. I'm gonna have to talk to the techies. A skier goes down a 30-foot ramp. This right here is basically saying that this ramp right, is is 30 feet above above ground. So it's going down that ramp. Okay. The lowest height it ever reaches is 12 feet and reaches the initial height at a distance of 50 feet. Whoa, like what's going on there? Well, the lowest height is 12, so that's definitely this part right here. That this point, the lowest, that's the vertex, is 12 feet. I still don't know this part right here. Oh, you know what? I'm going to erase this. Sorry, guys. It's going to be in the way if I have it there. My bad. I hope you're using pencil. I'm, I know that this is going to be something 12. I don't know the x value just yet for that. And I wish I would have made this a little bit bigger. But we know that you reach the initial height. What was the initial height? It was 30. Right? We reached the 30, which was the initial height, at a distance of 50 feet. So 50 feet horizontally gets us to 30 again. So you go down the ramp, you reach the lowest point, and then you get back to 30. So we know 50, 30 is a point. To get the middle, to get the x value for this, we're going to divide by 2. Okay. So we know that 25 feet horizontally gets us to that lowest point. Now we have the vertex. Fun stuff, eh? I know. I know, you're thrilled. They wanted us to give you a, a theatrical Tuesday, and this is, this is all I've got, man. 0, 30, 25, 12, 50, 30. What do you notice again? The 30, 30, right? You started at 30, you came back to 30, and you should see that symmetry piece. You should see, oh, I'm doubling. To, from the middle to the to when I get back to the initial, it's double, right? You should see that here too. It's like, oh, I, I went from 0 to 40, 40 to 0, and I doubled. That, so you should see that pattern, okay, as you go along. Okay, now let's do an example. So your homework, you have a long weekend, so you sleep in tomorrow, right? But then you want to work on 
uh, or you work. Some of you will work. I know that. I was in your shoes at one point. But you need to try these over the weekend. Not just one. I would say two or three minimum. Okay? So here we go. Page 72. One example. Okay. Roger would like to recycle his beverage container. He throws his container up from a height of 1.75 meters and estimates that it reaches a maximum height of 2.8 meters after 0.75 seconds. The container lands on the rim of the recycling bin. This is important. Does it hit the ground, guys? No. So I will be very obvious when it doesn't hit the ground. It hits the rim of... So you know those blue recycling bins with like the flat part and then there's a hole in the middle? So I'm thinking it lands there, so it's a, it's a fail, right? It should be like a quack on the, on the side there. And we're told that the bin is 0 0.65 meters tall. A lot of information, too much information maybe. The question says, determine the quadratic equation that models the path of the container. Let's sketch it. What are the two variables at play here? We're, we're given some sort of time, so we'll make this time and uh, a height, correct? Just sketch it. It doesn't have to be pretty. Does it start on the ground? It doesn't start. On, it starts somewhere here. Okay? We are at 1.75. So this is actually an easy point to put down already. That's 0 0.175 throws it up, gets to 2.8, and where does it land, folks? Does it hit the ground? No, but it does hit it somewhere at 0 0.65. It should be lower than 1.75. Okay, this is what's happening. That, let's not focus on this one right now. We just know it doesn't hit the ground. Let's focus on this piece right here. Do we know the vertex? Yes or no? Let's read. It says that we reach the maximum height of 2.8 after 0 0.75 seconds. That is the vertex, if you ask me, right? Write down vertex under it. Because we know both pieces of the vertex, okay? Vertex. So, you know what? A lot of students get this wrong, like the order of the numbers. So, remember, time is your x-axis. You, if time is, a, is there, it's your x-axis. So it'll be 0 0.75, 2.8. That's the vertex. Okay. And what am I going to focus on next, guys? This is the axis of symmetry. I'm going to focus on the point that is right across where I started. This is the one that I'm going to focus on. But Mr. Dirksen, what about the rim of the garbage bin? Leave it for now. Focus on this point right here. It's across where you started. So what do you know about the Y value here? 1.75, correct? And what do you know about the time it takes to get to 175 again? Times 2. We take this. Multiply that by 2. That is what? 150? That's uh, 150 seconds to get back to 175. We just don't know enough about this point right here, the rim. We know it's 0 0.65 meters tall. But right now, we have our three points. Go with it. Okay? Go with it. So we're going to go time and height. 0, 1.75. Then it's 0 0.75, 2.8. And then it's 150, 1.75. There are your three points. I'd strongly encourage you to put it in a table like that. And notice this. Notice I started here and I focused on how long does it take to get back to that. We go L1, L2. Stat, calc, quadreg. 
So I usually do this. I give you a mark for the sketch. I give you a mark for showing me the points. And then I usually give you a mark for the equation. Sometimes I just give you two marks in total because if you show me the points on the graph, I'm okay, I'm happy, right? So let's do this uh, on our calculators here real quick. The good news is that the window is usually uh, easier to find on these ones. Stat edit, clear whatever is in there. Zero. I'm just going to go to my home screen and I performed that regression not too long ago. I'm just going to copy paste that and just run it again. And here's your equation, negative 1.867. I'm going to round to three decimals. Why, Mr. Dirksen? Just because I feel like it. You could have gone 87. That's fine, as long as it's two decimals. Plus 2.8x plus 1.75. Okay, does this make sense? Is it negative? A is negative. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It's pointing down. That's what we expect. The 1.75 here, does that make sense? It does because it's our y-intercept and it, right, it jives with our graph. So don't just plug it away and just go with it. You have to see does it make sense, okay? Okay. Let's graph this before we continue, because chances are you're going to need to know what does it look like on my screen. I'm going to go zoom, and I'm going to try zoom stat, see what it does. Uh, hold on, as well. Zoom stat doesn't work a whole, uh, doesn't work very well for me here. What happened? Let's try it again. Zoom stat. Oh, there, I tried zoom. Uh, fit. That's what I try. So, this zoom stat. Listen carefully. I'm going to go to my window. Oh, x min is already negative. That's good. I'm going to go negative 1. Y min, make sure that's also negative. I'm going to go negative 1. I'm going to try how that, what that looks like. I'm going to hit graph. And so, that I kind of want to see a bit more than just the graph, right? So x max, one more time, x max, let's go 3. That's a pretty good graph. Notice that we only focus on quadrant 1 here. Okay. So what, does it, what is it asking us for? How long does it take for the beverage container to reach the rim of the recycling can? What would I do there? Yeah, can I just translate this real quick? It's saying, hey, how long would it take to get to 0 0.65? That's basically what this is asking. Okay, So we will let y2 be 0 0.65, and then we're going to find that intersection. So let's go ahead and do that. y, y2 is 0 0.65. I'm going to hit graph. <coughs> Do I care about this one here? No, no it's negative time. Don't even worry about it. Time, it. Actions for us starts here, goes up, and then hits the ground right here. It stops there. Okay. Second trace, five. Enter, enter, enter. So that is 1.82, 0 0.65. Remember all the questions I asked you, how long is this can at or above a certain height? That's still gain. Okay, I can still ask you those things. But right now, you just have to make sure you answer. It will take 1.82 seconds. Okay, don't just leave it at that. You have to give me some sort of indication with units that you understand it's a 1.82 seconds. How long does the container remain below 2.5 meters? So let's let's imagine our graph here. It hits the this is gonna be our 2.5 here. If you're not sure, first graph it. 
find the 2.5 line. It's right there. Okay. It's somewhere up there. It cuts it at the top there. This is the 2.5 meter line. Question. I think you would all know that you have to find these two x values. Let's go ahead and find those two. Second trace, five. Let's find the first one. How many decimals at this point? Four. Three, four, nine, one is the first one. Point three, four, nine, one. Second trace, five, again. Enter, enter, enter. That's 1.1509. Round it to four decimals. Question, if I subtract these two, am I gonna get my answer? No. What's, if you subtract these two, what's in between those two times? It's the time above. So what, what happens now, Mr. Dirksen? Watch this. We're gonna go time below, uh, above, sorry. My bad, my bad. Time above is 1.1509 minus 0 0.3491. And that is 0 0.8018 seconds. This is time above. <clears throat> so I'm going to grab a highlighter. I'm just going to say this represents what happened in between the two times I found. Every time you subtract, you find out what happened between those two times. <clears throat> but I want, I want this, right? That's what I want. So what would I do to get the time below? Total minus T above. So T below is going to be, my total time, I already figured it out, is 1.82. I'm going to subtract 0 0.8018. So time below is uh, 1.02 seconds. Why did you have to go and make it this hard, Mr. Dirksen? I just need you to understand both. Time above, time below, they can both be found. I want to graph and domain and range before we go, okay? So I'm going to, if, if I'm going too fast, the video is going to be up um, for you to catch up, okay? I just want to make sure it's all in here. So we have time and seconds. We have height in feet. I'm going to write down the equation already. Okay, the equation is there. I labeled my axes. And I'm going to come up with, it takes 1.82 seconds. So I can go 0.51, 1.52. Okay. That's, that's my scale there. And I go as high as 2.5. So it would be 0.51. 1.52, 2.53. Height is in meters? Yes, so, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, that is meters, yeah. And so you just got to make sure it's 1.75 is right here. My highest point is uh, 0 0.75. That's here, 0 0.75. 2.8, somewhere there, and watch this, it doesn't hit the ground, 1.82, 0 0.65, somewhere there, so you sketch it, it hits there, that's it, you don't go all the way to the x-axis, because you don't hit the ground, it hits the rim. So all these points that I plotted, we already found.
domain and range. It will, this will follow you till next year, guys. Domain and range isn't gonna go anywhere. For my time, it starts at time zero. Like you literally wanna go along the x-axis, okay? You start at zero and you get to 1.82 seconds. That's at the furthest it will time will go. For range, what's the lowest height you reach? It's the rim of your garbage bin, and then the highest is determined by the vertex, which is 2.8. That's it. No infinities here, please. The homework is 73. I'm going to go to 76, but uh, I don't expect you to do every single one, but I think page 76 has a QR code. I think that's a video if you're stuck on that one. It should have a QR code. Let's see. I don't think it made it. Sorry, guys. No QR code, but uh, that's that. Thank you.